Imagine turning on your computer tomorrow morning and realizing that nothing about it has to stay the way someone else decided. Not the way windows move, not how menus appear, not how notifications behave, not even how your workflow unfolds minute by minute. Imagine a desktop that doesn't just let you change colors and wallpapers, but quietly invites you to reshape how you think, how you work, and how your system responds to you. Most people never experience this. They live inside fixed assumptions about what a computer should be. But a small number of users cross a threshold where the desktop stops being a product and starts becoming a personal instrument. Ah, and once that happens, it's very hard to go back. At first, this idea sounds abstract. Customization usually gets reduced to surface level aesthetics, themes, icons, dark mode. Things that look impressive in screenshots but fade into the background after a few days. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about a desktop environment that can adapt to your habits instead of forcing you to adapt to it. A system where the layout can change depending on what you're doing, where shortcuts evolve with your workflow, and where automation lives right on the surface, rather than hidden behind scripts and config files. The kind of environment where two people can run the same operating system and yet feel like they're using entirely different machines. The reason this matters isn't just personal preference. It shows up in productivity, in long-term satisfaction, and increasingly in professional and enterprise environments where flexibility is no longer optional. As remote work spread and roles became more specialized, the idea of a one-size-fits-all desktop started to crack. Developers, designers, analysts, system administrators, and content creators all interact with their machines differently. When the desktop can't keep up, friction builds slowly and silently. Minutes lost every day. Small frustrations that compound. What? A sense that the system is always slightly in the way. What makes this especially interesting is that most people assume extreme customization must come with extreme complexity. They imagine endless configuration files, fragile setups, and a constant fear of breaking something. And in the past, that assumption wasn't entirely wrong. Many highly customizable systems demanded deep technical knowledge and a willingness to tinker endlessly just to stay productive. But something changed over the last few years. A desktop environment emerged that combined depth with polish, power with approachability, and freedom with stability. It didn't announce itself loudly. It didn't chase trends. It just kept quietly evolving while the rest of the ecosystem debated minimalism versus simplicity. At first glance, this desktop doesn't overwhelm you. It's part of the illusion. You can install it, log in, and use it like a normal computer without touching a single setting. Windows open, menus behave, applications launch, nothing feels experimental or unstable. But beneath that calm surface is an almost absurd amount of control. Control over how windows snap and tile. Control over what happens when you drag something to the edge of the screen. Control over how virtual desktops behave, how many there are, and how they're arranged in space. Control over animations, compositing, scaling, and rendering. Control over input behavior down to individual devices. The deeper you go, the more you realize this isn't a collection of random toggles. It's a system designed around the idea that the user should decide how the desktop behaves. Panels can be moved, duplicated, resized, hidden, or transformed entirely. You can place multiple panels on different edges of the screen, each serving a different role. One can act as a traditional taskbar. Another can become a minimalist status display. Another can be dedicated to launchers or widgets that update in real time. And none of this requires restarting the system or editing text files. You adjust it live while you work. This is where the experience starts to diverge from other desktops. Instead of forcing you into a single workflow, it allows multiple workflows to coexist. You can build a layout optimized for deep focus with minimal distractions then switch to a more information-dense layout when multitasking. You can configure activities that don't just change wallpapers, but redefine which apps open, how windows are arranged, and what resources are immediately available. For people who juggle different roles on the same machine, this becomes transformative. The computer stops being a static tool and starts feeling responsive to context. Behind the scenes, this level of flexibility requires serious engineering. Every component has to be modular. Panels, Widgets, effects, and behaviors need to interact without stepping on each other. 
Stability matters because customization loses its appeal the moment it becomes unreliable. And this is where long-term trust comes into play. Enterprises don't care about flashy demos. They care about systems that can be tailored to internal workflows and still remain predictable over years. This desktop has quietly earned that trust in sectors where Linux already plays a major role. From research labs to engineering firms to creative studios. Another layer of customization that often gets overlooked is performance behavior. This desktop allows you to tune how resources are used depending on your hardware and priorities. Animations can be subtle or dramatic. Compositing can be optimized for battery life or visual fidelity. Scaling behaves intelligently on high resolution displays, something that still trips up many systems today. On modern hardware, it feels smooth and refined. On older machines, it can be dialed back to remain responsive. That adaptability extends the usable life of hardware which matters more than ever as companies and individuals look to reduce unnecessary upgrades. What's especially compelling is how discoverable all of this is. You don't need to read documentation for hours just to begin. Settings are organized logically. Changes preview instantly. You're encouraged to experiment because reverting is easy. That psychological safety changes how people interact with their systems. Instead of fearing customization, they explore it. Over time, the desktop becomes more aligned with how they think and work, and that alignment is what keeps people loyal. Not because they're locked in, but because leaving would feel like giving up something deeply personal. As the ecosystem around this desktop grew, so did the community contributions. Widgets created by users, themes that go far beyond color changes and reshape the entire visual language. Extensions that integrate system monitoring, productivity tools, and external services directly into the desktop. This organic growth is important because it means customization isn't limited to what the core developers imagined. The platform acts as a foundation, not a ceiling. And because it's open, organizations can build their own extensions tailored to internal needs without waiting for upstream changes. At this point, it's worth addressing the elephant in the room. Many people hear about extreme customization and immediately think of tiling window managers or bare-bones environments that demand constant tweaking. Those tools are powerful, but they also require a mindset that not everyone shares. The desktop we're talking about here occupies a different space. It offers comparable flexibility without abandoning familiar concepts. You still have windows. You still have menus. You still have graphical settings. The difference is that nothing is sacred. Almost every behavior can be adjusted, replaced, or extended. This balance is why it has quietly become the default choice for users who want control without chaos. Developers appreciate the ability to script behaviors and integrate tools deeply. Designers appreciate the visual refinement and theming capabilities. Power users appreciate the endless tuning. And newcomers appreciate that they can start simple and grow into it over time. That growth path matters. It turns curiosity into commitment. As Linux continues to gain traction on desktops beyond enthusiasts, this kind of environment plays a strategic role. It demonstrates that freedom doesn't have to mean fragmentation. That choice doesn't have to mean confusion. In fact, when done well, choice becomes a competitive advantage. Organizations deploying Linux at scale can standardize on a base setup, while still allowing individuals to tailor their experience within defined boundaries. That flexibility can improve satisfaction without sacrificing manageability. What's fascinating is that despite all this capability, this desktop rarely markets itself aggressively. It doesn't rely on hype cycles. It doesn't chase radical redesigns just to stay relevant. Instead, it iterates. Slowly, carefully, and with an eye toward long-term usability. Features appear not because they look good in screenshots, but because they solve real problems. That philosophy resonates with users who plan to stay on a platform for years rather than months. If you've ever felt constrained by your desktop, if you've ever adjusted your habits to fit the system rather than the other way around, this is where the story turns. Because the most customizable Linux desktop of all time isn't defined by how much you can change. It's defined by how naturally those changes integrate into daily use. It's defined by the absence of friction by the feeling that the computer is finally on your side. And now, after all this buildup, it's time to name it. The desktop environment that embodies this philosophy, has quietly set the benchmark for customization without compromise, is KDE Plasma. Not as a gimmick. Not as a toy for tinkerers. 
but as a mature, deeply engineered platform that respects the intelligence and individuality of its users. Plasma isn't perfect, and it doesn't try to be everything to everyone, but it offers something rare in modern computing, genuine agency. The ability to shape not just how your desktop looks, but how it behaves, how it responds, and how it supports the way you work. For those who invest the time to explore it, the reward isn't novelty, it's comfort, familiarity, and a sense that the machine has finally become an extension of you. If you've stayed this long, you've already sensed why this matters. Not because customization is flashy, but because it's empowering. In a world where so much software feels increasingly locked down, that empowerment is quietly revolutionary. And once you experience it, it's very hard to settle for anything less.